Okay, what I want to talk to you today about is uh, a little bit of an issue that I was having earlier today, which has to do with retargeting my motion capture onto a custom rig in Maya. Uh, so I need to point out that this is not one of the standard human IK rigs that just gets auto-generated in Maya. This is one that I created myself. You've probably seen some of the creation and other tutorials that I have. And uh, the main issue was uh, that when I went to apply the motion capture to this rig, um, only parts of the rig moved around. <laughs> and many of the parts just got left behind, which is very annoying. And I have run into this issue before and I couldn't remember what the solution was. So this video is in part just as much of a way to teach you as it is a way to remind myself later on in case I forget again. Um, now, ultimately, just for a long story short, for anyone who doesn't really want to watch the whole thing and see me blather on, uh, it comes down to uh, character sets. And so ultimately, you do not want to have a character set on your rig if you are going to be retargeting motion capture onto it because it creates a problem. Um, namely, it makes it not possible to retarget. So just really quickly, um, I have I went through in Motion Builder and I... Uh, took the motion capture of the raw data that I had and I applied it to an actor and then I used the actor to then um, apply it to a basic rig that I'd created. Now this, this here is sort of that basic rig. It's a sort of a dumbed down version of the, the rig that I have. Um, and this was created with the quick rig tool in Maya just to generate these joints because they have the right naming convention and, and proper character definition and all that to begin with. Um, so then I just sort of match those joints to the locations of the joints here on my control rig. Now, just so that you understand, they're not perfectly matched up at the moment simply because this already has the motion capture on it. Um, so those joints are kind of baked in. They're, they're not in their exact original location. Um, so long story short, uh, I bring this in and I remember it working correctly in one of my files. So I go back and try to find that file, which is this one right here. Um, version 44 of my rig and the way that this is supposed to work is if i go into human ik um, i can take a custom rig that i've made and retarget onto it which is really good um, if you're not familiar with that process i'll cover it in, an, in another video but essentially um, once you create your definition for your your normal character rig uh, you can then click on this button right here, which if I hover over, it says create custom rig mapping, and that will create this tab. And um, here is where you can define which controllers correspond to which of these different uh, effectors here. So once you've done that, um, you now have a way of sort of indicating which controllers affect which parts of the body. Maya doesn't figure it out automatically, so you have to tell it. And um, so, since our our uh, custom rig here that I created is, uh, I should say, this, this pink rig, which has the motion capture data on it. It's sort of my in-between from Motion Builder into Maya because I can't take the, uh, the custom rig that I've created. It's got constraints and clusters and various things that uh, Motion Builder doesn't like to work with. Um, so I can't bring that into Motion Builder. I have to kind of create an in-between, which is what this little... Um, rig is here and uh, that way I can take the, the motion that's in there and bring it back into Maya in a way that I can retarget it in Maya. Um, so so long as my uh, definition on this guy matches my definition on here and that's really important to point this out they need to have uh, the same number of joints um, so for instance I have three joints here in the head and you'll see one two three there if I only had two here or only two here and it was a mismatch then it wouldn't work because there'd be a difference in our definitions and we would run into problems uh, so you just have to make sure that you don't have any you know irregularities like that so um, all I would do at this point is to go in and say all right my custom rig that's the thing that I want to target onto source that's the thing that's going to drive it um, in this case that's the, the magenta skeleton there is actually called character. Um, that's why that says character here. That's not necessarily the uh, the term it has to say. It might say something different depending on how you named it. So I click character, and then all of the joints pop into place. And if I scrub, then we see okay things are moving around properly. 
course, we have some things like the pole vector is not moving um, exactly where they should, but that's pretty normal. It's easy enough to fix with some animation layers. And uh, there we go. So this is what I knew was supposed to happen uh, because I'd done it before. But um, what, had, what had happened was I had decided that ultimately um, I wanted to change the number of joints in the neck. And as a result, I went back and I sort of redid some of the rigging here. And I basically um, thought maybe the reason why I was not getting things to work on the new version of this rig was because I messed around with uh, some of the joints. Um, so to give you an idea here, if I pull up the more recent version here, this is version 49, um, we have just uh, the orientation here is such that instead of this being treated like the top control, now just this joint is being treated like the top control. Uh, so I sort of move things around. I was using um, a automatic rigging tool called Rapid Rig Modular to create this. And so I recreated the joint layout based on um, uh, sort of rapid rig redoing a lot of the work for me, which was nice. Um, now, what happens? Well, I have the same motion capture data right here. And if I go into human IK again and I choose uh, my character source again, all right, things pop into place. That looks good. Looks like it's going to work. But here's what happens. I scrub. All right. <laughs> Only the uh, elbows and hands sort of move around. Everything else gets stuck behind. And um, this is where I got really frustrated. And I spent quite a bit of time today trying to come up with various solutions for how to fix this. Um, I ultimately um, even tried to sort of rebuild the rig a little bit. I did actually use Rapid Rig Modular to rebuild the rig. And I found that when I did that, um, I was able to retarget again, very similar to the results that I got in uh, the version 44 of the rig. The only trouble with that is that um, it basically destroyed a lot of my other custom rigging that I had on the face, which was not an ideal solution since I've just spent a whole bunch of time doing facial motion capture um, and cleaning that up. So what I, after after a while, sort of you run out of options, you try to test what are the most likely sources of frustration and what are the most likely sources of problems. and you kind of tick your way down the list and then eventually you probably start getting into the nitty-gritty of looking at uh, just the individual connections and one of the things that I wanted to look at was what is the difference between ultimately um, this version of the file and the version in, in 44 and uh, so I started looking at the joint setup in the outliner started looking at the various controls. And if I just look at these controls while I see human IK over here, I don't necessarily see the problem. So if I, however, pop back into just my channel box, um, I might start to notice where there could be an issue. Now, some of these um, controls here ultimately have uh, some other factors like uh, orient or parent constraints or things like that affecting them and that's all well and good. Um, you would expect that in a control rig like this. However, one of the things that I saw um, when I was looking at version 49 was, if I pop back into the channel box, let's grab something here, there we go, how everything here is indicated in yellow. And I thought, okay, that's that's different. Why is that different from version 44? What is, what is the main difference here? And so what I did was I popped into my, um, my relationship editor here. So if I would go to um, the hypergraph connections, right? And I look at this thing, and there's a bunch of stuff to look at here, but I don't need to see all of it. I just need to kind of get close to where that particular selected node is, and I saw this. And that kind of like dawned on me. I said, I remember there being a problem with this before. And I think it was just by accident that I decided to delete it before. And I said, character set, I bet that's the problem. And so if I delete that character set, now what the character set is doing is it's, 
Um, well, you know, it, 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 from the actual background information or the, the, the what's going on in the background, I'm not entirely sure 100% precisely what it's doing, but it is creating a series of overrides on, or, or at least something to do with each control that is essentially locking down some values in a way that uh, makes it impossible to retarget your data. So if you have, for whatever reason, gone through and added a character set to your model, or to your rig, then you won't be able to retarget onto it. You'll have to delete that character set, which is as simple as going in and, and doing what I just did there. I'm sure there's other ways you can delete the character set as well. Um, so now if I were to, to pop over here and let's see if this will let me do this without having to restart, I'm just gonna pop back to stance real quick, which was the original location of things. And we'll go back to character again. All right, now let's see. Now things are working. And remember, this is version 49. So um, that's a ridiculously simple solution, but um, ultimately it was born out of, um, uh, out of many, many, many hours of work today. Uh, <laughs> fruitless work, really. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's the, the main takeaway from this is just keeping track of your character sets and whether or not they are going to create conflicts for you. So hopefully this can be of use to somebody down the track. Good luck, everyone.